Carl Baden is our featured photographer on this week's episode of The Crit House. His My Five Images include the work of Robert Frank, Andre Cortez, Henry Wessel, Cindy Sherman, and Carrie Mae Weems. Uh, well, Carl Baden, welcome to the Crit House. It's nice to uh, to have you on the program. It's uh, we've been talking for a little bit, but thanks for thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a fun conversation when we talk about your five images. For those out there who are unfamiliar with Carl Baden, he is a photographer who has exhibited at museums and galleries internationally. His images are included in the permanent collections at places like MoMA, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and the Addison Gallery, among others. He has taught at uh, Harvard University, the Rhode Island School of Design, Clark University, and uh, not too long ago, retired from a position at Boston College. He has uh, photographed every his face every day since, and, and this is just coincidental, February 23rd of 1987, and we're recording this on February 23rd. Um, yeah, that's, so today's, today's the 37th anniversary. Yeah, that's uh, congratulations, happy anniversary. I already did it today, so <laughs> good. And that's that was before we all had our little selfies, and it was easy to take selfies. No, it's it was with film, and it still is with film. Although I do a digital backup, um, just in case. So, uh, Carl Baden, uh, we we uh, we asked you to take a look at five images to talk about, and what did you? go through in the process of deciding on those five images? Well, just like everybody else, I'm sure that, that that you've worked with on the show, uh, I had an awful time. (laughs) I know it's hard. People hate, people hate me for it. I don't, I don't think I could call to mind 40% of photos that I really like at any one time. So I decided actually to limit myself to, um, I guess you'd call it a trope that I've always been interested in. And, um, you know, loosely called uh, observing the observer or viewing the viewer. And um, it's sort of a meta problem in photography because photography, whatever else it might be about, is most often about looking. Mm -hmm. And so here you have the photographer looking at someone who's looking and you do uh, add the viewer looking at the photographer looking at someone who's looking. Carl Baden, we start with a uh, a Robert Frank image and a lot of people who only know Robert Frank, the Americans may not be familiar with this one because it is not in that book. It's not. And in fact, it was made in 1958, which was the year that the original first edition of the Americans, uh, Les Americains, was published in France. So it was before um, the the edition that we know, which was published one year later uh, by Grove Press. And it's a man, uh, he, he titles it, um, uh, A Man on the Platte River in Tennessee. And... Um, as you can see, it's someone observing something. And I, I, I feel that this is the, let's call it the OG of this kind of trope or style. <laughs> um, and the thing that I really just still love about it is that um, there is nothing um, superficial that is going on in the photograph. I mean, the photograph, you can't say it's about anything that's interesting on the surface. Everything that's interesting about the photograph is what you can't see. And by that, I mean, what's going on in this guy's mind? You don't see his face. You don't see his expression. All you see is his body language. And He's sort of hunched over, his hands are jammed into his pocket, presumably, and the the visual of that body, that shape, is is just, I, I, I just think it's wonderful, 
And it becomes a very psychological image, almost existential. Is he, is he looking at, does he own the cow? Is he looking and maybe times are tough and he's worried about, um, you know, what, whether the crops will grow or whether he'll, you know, get enough milk to sell for the, for the season or, or something completely different. But everything that I get from this photograph is in my mind. And it's just triggered by the beautiful, but sort of disturbing shape of the guy and the desire that I have to see around the other side. Yeah. Andre Cortez with your second image. And this is in Martinique, if I remember correctly. Yes. It's uh, Martinique, uh, the island of Martinique, I think. And it's uh, it was taken on January 1st. New Year's Day, 1972. And um, that's kind of special to me because 1972 was the year that I started photographing. So he took this picture when I was a beginning photographer, just being interested in photography. And the other thing about this is that he took this picture when he was 77 years old. Yeah. And I, I I think it's one of his greatest pictures. It is. Uh, it's certainly one of his best known. And so this is a little shift on the idea of the viewer viewing uh, coming off of the Robert Frank photograph because <clears throat> we're not directly behind the viewer. So we are looking at the viewer from the side who is looking straight ahead out to sea. Uh, I just want to say one more thing about yeah. this. But the space in this picture is unbelievable. Um, you know, it it is so sharply divided into, you know, basically four separate spaces. And there's there's no, it completely collapses the photograph into two dimensions. I mean, I rarely see a photograph that works from three dimensions into two, even though they all do. Yeah. I rarely see a photograph that works as effectively as this. Henry Wessel Jr. Henry Wessel is certainly uh he he's he died a few years ago. He's but he's certainly one of uh the photograph photographers who I think was a natural right right from the start. And um so this photograph of, uh, again you can see how it fits into the little theme that I constructed of the yes. photographer viewing the viewer. And what I have often um, remarked about this picture is that, so here's a guy looking at, uh, I guess it's a flock of pigeons or some kind of bird yep. uh, taking off, which is something that, you know, everybody has seen or walked into a little flock of pigeons. Awesome. The guy is watching them take off and the photographer is watching the guy and the pigeons take off as well. But what I like is that what the, what the man sees and what we see through the shutter speed of a 500th or a thousandth of a second is completely different. Mm -hmm. And so that takes us to one of the base tenets of taking a photograph and what it does to what we know as reality or what we call reality. We're seeing the same thing, but we're seeing it completely differently. I think Wessel was one of the people who um, photographed with more uh, or printed, I should say, with more of an open tonal scale, which kind of suffuses his pictures with with light and it kind of captures um more like western united states type of light um you can see it in many of robert adams photographs the ones yeah. that he took in the daytime uh, these days you can see it in mark steinmetz's pictures many of lee friedlander's pictures since the late 1970s and cindy sherman as we watch okay. her watch her 
Yep, so here's a well-known image. Um, and again, you can see we're uh, watching The Watcher. And this is um, her early work, uh, or the, the, the work that first landed her on the map. Um, it's from 1979, uh, untitled film still, I think it's number 48. And it's certainly one of the most widely reproduced images from that series. And, um, you know, without going into what Cindy Sherman was doing in terms of whether it was a self-portrait or not a self-portrait, she, she used herself as kind of an actress. Yep. And, of course, she was uh, part of what is now known as the pictures generation. And so you can see she has set herself up as this woman who is a paradigm of innocence. Um, waiting for a ride. I mean, she's essentially hitchhiking without her thumb out. The way that she has dressed herself um, from the wig to the checkered dress, uh, you know, the gingham type dress to, again, her body language to the white rolled down socks and tennis sneakers and the clothing um, you know, not quite making it into her suitcase. Just popping out uh, like she was leaving her quickly to slam. Yeah, I, I mean, and, th and then the other thing that's obvious once you look a little further is that she's lit. You know, this is not natural flash, lighting. Yeah. This, well, yeah, it could be a flash. It could be a spotlight, but it. Yeah. It, it doesn't reference a flash as much as it references movie lighting. And um, so... You know, she is like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz waiting for Norman Bates um, from Psycho to be driving around the corner. I mean, you do feel this tension and worry about her. Yeah. Carrie Mae Weems at yeah, the Lincoln Memorial. This is the last one. You can probably see, you know, I, I, I'm kind of going chronologically and i started out with robert frank in 1948 cortege was 72 wessel was 77 sherman was 79 and this is 2014 and this is also a an intentionally made photograph this is set up um and and the the black figure in the center of the photograph is carrie may weems whether she sees it as a self-portrait or not, I think is debatable. I, I, I would say she probably does in in one regard, but I think that she sees herself as something more. Now, um, the title of this picture, I believe, is Echoes for Marion. And the Marion that she's referring to is Marion Anderson. The who opera was singer. Yes, she was a very famous soprano and extremely talented. And she, in 1939, I think was the year, I could be wrong, but um, she was asked to sing um, in someplace in Washington. I don't think it was the Capitol Rotunda, but it was some famous place like that. Yep. And the Daughters of the American Revolution, who had say over that in some way, uh, forbid her to sing um, because she was Black. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor Roosevelt um, intervened and had her sing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And so here's Carrie Mae Weems dressed entirely in Black, standing as this lone figure facing Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial. This is one of the most powerful pictures um, in modern, you know, in the past 20 or so years that I can think of. We are watching the artist watching the statue of Abraham Lincoln. But the other thing is that she's not just looking, she is witnessing. And that's a very important thing. She is facing the man who emancipated the slaves. Well, Carl Baden, uh, great 
images and a great conversation. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us here on the Crit well, House. Thanks for letting me blab away. <laughs> <laughs> you blab well, my friend, and and happy anniversary to uh, to your well, ongoing thanks. project of your yes. images every day. Hopefully, many more years. Yeah, I, I hope so as well. And thank okay. you all for watching the Crit House.